Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to 2018's new and improved Two Fat Gingers. Woo! This reminds me, I was going to do a, I was going to do a, a, an intro, a WWE themed intro for one of the ones from before, and oh. it was going to be, welcome to the most, most, the most must listen podcast in the entire history of the internet. Welcome to, and then you were supposed to shout, Two Fat Gingers have a conversation. Um. Oh, okay. It's, what it's, you said. But, it, but it's fine. No, 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 no. It's fine. I, it's like you know that that. Let's consider the uh, the stable door open and the horse bolted, as far as that one's concerned. Unless a horse, more kind of rhinoceros type thing. Well, indeed. One would think. Or indeed, elephants. Elephants, yeah. perhaps. Ah, so we are addressing the two elephants in the room. Well, you said we were. So yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's do that. So, so we've been offline for a short while. And when I say a short while, way longer than I think either of us think that it's been. It was like, what, 2014 we lasted this, something like that? I, I think it was, I think it was 1987, wasn't it? Oh, goodness me. You were barely alive in 1987. What are you talking about? I, I was I, 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 old, eight years old. Yeah, I was older than that. <clears throat> yes, I know you were. And uh, yeah. it's one thing that keeps me going during the days, knowing that I'm not the oldest of the two of us. <laughs> hey, you do know all I need to do is is end my life, and essentially that then takes down. Ah, but you won't do that. <laughs> it's I have no plans to certainly. You're you're far but too yeah, just you're far too popular I, to do I that. I have the power here. I have the power here. Well, yeah, I, you think that, but it does leave me with options as well, doesn't it? Well, it's true. But it's not a driving factor in my life. No, oh, nor mine, but. Am I still a heel, by the way? Yes, I think so. Good, excellent. Uh, excellent. Recognize the one thing that I am just enough of an asshole that if you did that just to, to make sure that I was then became older than you at some point, then the, the day before I would become older than you or the same age, I would do the same. So, yeah, dick move maybe, but... Wow, that's proper yeah. cutting off your nose to bite your face, that is. I would Goodness leave it me. till that point as well. I wouldn't do it early. My word. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, enough of this happy chat. What have we been Yay! doing? What have we been doing with our time? 2018, indeed. This is going to be a fantastic year. Yes, if we survive it. Oh, we will survive it. I don't believe this whole World War Three Nostradamus prediction or somebody else prediction. Everybody's predicting things. I've read read loads of predictions. Anyone who's been watching Twitter lately, I think, is predicting the end of the world. That's where it's going now. Yeah, I'm a stable genius. What do I know? A what? A genius? A stable genius. You're a stable genius. That was Trump's oh Twitter God. response to the book oh, that came out that said he was a narcissistic, uh, insane child. His response yeah. was, "I'm a stable genius." Yeah. Which yep. either means he is a genius who is mentally uh, okay, or it means he's a genius at building and cleaning out stables. Mm-hmm. Something, something harsh. Yep. Yep. Nice. Yep. Indeed. But yes, 2018. Let's try and avoid the digressions, I suppose, because, you know, that's, I, I can't help thinking that's probably not why the handful of people that listen to us listen to us. But maybe Absol- it is. I don't know. Absolutely is. Apparently, the, 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 the hundreds and hundreds of listeners that we got last year enjoy our little bants as much as our on-topic conversations. Oh, well. I did have somebody uh, inquire as to where our Star Wars episode was. Ah. Which I think well, was quite entertained by. <laughs> I didn't even know he listened. There you go. Well, aren't they lucky? Because today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children yeah. of all ages, we will talk about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. And there will be spoilers if you haven't seen it. But then if you haven't seen it, I'm guessing you're not the type of person that's going to be listening to two fat changes have a conversation. If we're uh, particularly generous, I guess we might put um, a note on the on where we post this as Indeed. to exactly when the spoiler bit starts. Uh, so you can, you know, skip it or something. Or and go to Star Wars and then listen to us. 
Mm, yeah, indeed. We can do that on YouTube. We can do it on our website. I'm not sure how easy it is on things like uh, your iTunes and the like. But eh, we'll no, see. It's we'll not do. easy at all. Well, actually, yeah. it pulls the feed from the website. So, woo! Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say this, just as a general aside, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen The Last Jedi yet, pause this, put it in your podcast library to listen to later, get up off your ass, leave the house, go to the cinema, watch Star Wars The Last Jedi, come home, brush your teeth, it's a long film, a lot of candy, a lot of soda, sit down, open up your podcast library, and listen to us from this point forward. And for those for those of the UK, um, that's sweeties and and juice, um, candy and soda. Just you know, candy and keep soda. Keep your UK fans happy. Keep your UK have, fans happy. You know. What do we have to say it in French as well? Uh, no. We, no, we, we have, have had a listener from Taiwan in the last month. Well, if you know what that is in Taiwanese, go nuts. But I certainly don't. I could certainly make something up, but it would probably come out highly offensive. Indeed. And you've got to assume that like, everybody can at least understand English. So well, the only we, reason I'm we struggle, was, to be fair. You've got, the, you've got English and then you've got Americans. So I was figuring, well, we'll, we'll, we'll cater for the Americans, I guess, with the candy and soda. But we'll, I, uh, for I international just, English, we'll, we'll, we'll do sweeties and juice. I just like saying candies and soda. Really? It's just the awkward side of me, yes. Something to do with your chat-up lines, is it? Absolutely. Would you like to taste my candy and soda? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Little person. Green I'm pain. not a little person. <clears throat> no. It sounds like your chat-up targets are. So, Star Wars. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving swiftly on from the uh, unsavory conversation. Yeah, Star Wars. What's that? What's Star Wars? So, it's this uh, small cultish um, genre movie. I guess. Oh, is it is it the thing with the bald guy? The bald guy in the jumpsuit. Is that him? Uh, no. Is it? No. No. You know, the, the English guy. Bald English guy in the jumpsuit. It says, make it so or something. Is that not, is that not him? Oh, that not him? God, that took me so wow. long. Oh no, that's, uh, that's Star Trek. <sighs> They're slightly right. different. Um, Star Trek's the one with the Enterprise and so on. Star Wars is the one with the Daleks. Right, Daleks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought that was a medical drama. Uh, no, you're thinking uh, The Falcon. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. Four Star bites Wars. of O negative stat. <laughs> we are losing him. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Haven't you missed us, people? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Th- thank you so much. You put up with so much. Really, you do. You Amazing. do. Anyway. Yes, Star Wars. So. Mm-hmm. so so I guess the first thing to talk about is it seems to have divided the fan base. Oh, it was always going to divide the fan base, wasn't it? Well, more so than... so. And, and I've had some fun, and you've seen the fun I've had with, with some of our friends about little memes yeah. that I'm posting with the, yeah. oh, Force Awakens was too derivative. Oh, Last Jedi is too different. Um but uh, that's that's what I mean. That that was always going to happen to, to a greater or lesser degree. I guess the the maybe the weird thing is that the division seems pretty much down the middle this time. Yeah, and I, and I think also you know even the fans who thought the Force Awakens was derivative still seem to enjoy it, whereas this really yeah. seems to have, have cut a chasm uh, between the fans, and, and, and it's kind of strange because you see the thing, not my Skywalker hashtag, whatever it is. Um, and you think, yeah, you know, a Jedi wouldn't run away and, and hide themselves because they failed. Yeah, because Yoda didn't do that and Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't do that. You know, that's not at all also, what these great Jedi did. Also, Jedi aren't real. Uh, well, so, you we, know, we, we assume they're not real. They're, I, they're a fictional construct and as such can be made to do or say anything that the person in charge of writing that fictional, con- fictional construct wants them to. Well, again... We don't own them. Again... This is an assumption we make. I have no evidence to prove they're real or to prove that they're not real. Just because I have not met one or seen one knowingly does not mean that they may not be real. Yeah, but they all died out. You know, it was a long time ago. Well, long, long time ago, in fact. Again, this is an assumption we are making. Also, that, that was the last one, wasn't 
Didn't we just what? see the last one? Well, oh, God. Now we're, getting, now we're going to get into the spoilers, <laughs> aren't we? But, yeah, the... the, the no, because that was the name of the film. That was where I was going with it. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, only um, if I answer it, whether it was or was not the yes, last indeed. Jedi. But... But yes, the the point I would make with this, I, I I haven't honestly, I haven't followed an awful lot of this. There was something I vaguely picked up on about the fact that uh, Mark Hamill uh, had some issues with his role in the movie, which I, I don't know an awful lot about. So perhaps you can enlighten me um, I, with that if you know. But I, I, the, I think the, not much has been said about that. So, no, so uh, but some that. some was said by him, which was the thing. And then yeah. what I saw was um. Not apologizing, but basically stepping away, saying no, fine. I didn't like it. I didn't see what the vision was, but I was wrong. Yeah, it's all good. I, that, that was what I saw, so. and, and that was essentially it. I think he read through the part, and I think he, like everybody else in the world, including myself, wanted to see Luke Skywalker pick up a lightsaber and absolutely decimate everybody in his way. Um, yes, pure Jedi boner power or whatever it is, the same way that we all kind of got at the end of Rogue One with uh, with Vader. Yeah. Who just, just destroyed the rebels. Um, I think everybody wanted to see that Luke Skywalker, and I think even Mark Hamill probably wanted to see that Luke Skywalker. Um, but and, and I would have liked to see that Luke Skywalker, I'm not going to lie. But I'm quite happy with how it turned out because I think it from a from a story perspective and and moving it through a trilogy, which this is you know the second part of the new trilogy, um, and moving it through that trilogy, I think it was far better that Luke Skywalker was the Luke Skywalker that we got rather than the heroic Luke Skywalker. Yeah, I didn't expect badassery. I think if it was going to be badassery, it needed to be a decade ago. Yes. Like yeah. he's playing a character that is the age he is. He's not. He's not a badassery kind of person. I'm uh, sure but... he can do like things with hands. Hell, if you look at what he actually did do in the film, it's badassery. It is I, pretty it high is. level badassery. It is, but, but. Uh, I think people wanted. Uh, yeah, people wanted more, 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 yes. more. How do you like it? How do you like it? Yes, and this is exactly the point I was going to make, which is that people are. Partic- I, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is a. An internet brought on phenomenon, but people are very entitled. This the character does not belong to them. The film does not belong to them. It's been yeah. made for them to a degree, in terms of you know, for a piece of art or entertainment to be made, or both in fact, to be made for them to go and consume. But the level of entitlement in the way that people post opinions and things is just is really, really quite frustrating. Episodes one to three met the same thing, and that was Early days of in, of internet, um, very very early days of the internet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but they so the, you know one to three meant the same sort of you know thing. This is not my Star Wars. This is not my Star Wars. This is not my Star Wars. He's yes. raping my childhood. He, he's yes. doing this. He's doing exactly. that. I'm thinking, well, actually, he, it was he, never he, your he Star Wars. That. Yeah, it was never yours. And yeah. the the funny thing is, if you if you interact with some youngsters, some youngins. Or, or used to be youngins anyway, you know, episodes one to three is their Star Wars, and, and they, they, they look upon four to six with kind of a, ooh, isn't that a little bit kitchen old-fashioned type thing. But that's it. It's not their Star Wars either. Well, you know what I mean. I, I it's, do. But... It's, there's a trilogy for a generation, and then a trilogy for a generation, and now there's a trilogy for a new generation, or whatever you want, yeah. or a trilogy yeah. for all generations. Yes. Um, but it plays to a certain audience. And let's face it, Star Wars is essentially a child's film. Mm. Um, the first three were, the second three were, the cartoons definitely are, the games are, you know, and okay, they've got a slightly grittier, darker edge to the new ones yeah. and, and things, but it's not dark. live in a different point, world. Yeah, it's not darker to the point where it's not still a kid's film. No, um, indeed. It's still aimed at people, you know, eight, nine, ten upwards. Yeah. Um, I. I've been a fan of Star Wars since, oh God, I can't even begin, but before I was eight, certainly, because I can remember my excitement at seeing Return of the Jedi for the first time. So I was eight when that came out, and by the time I saw it, it would have been some months later, da, da, da. but I remember the, my level of excitement by that stage. So for the vast chunk of my life, I have been a massive Star Wars geek nerd. I've played many, many of the games. I've read tons and tons of the books. I've you know, watched the films countless times. 
but I've never felt the same thing. I've never felt the level of hatred of Jar Jar Binks that everybody else seemed to have, or that that's not everybody else, that's not true, that the vocal minority seemed to have. It's always a vocal minority, it seems to be, with these things. So um, I, I'm so. with you on that. I, I mean, <clears throat> Jar Jar, I'm not particularly warm to him. Um, no. No, I could I mean, have I could, lived without him, but yeah, you know he didn't ruin anything by any stretch of the imagination. No. And there are things in this latest film I could happily do with that as well. The the whole middle section on the on that kind of casino world, to be honest, is like I don't really see what the point of that was. Well, it brought us Benicio del Toro, who's, who will hopefully show up in the next. I'm hoping he's in nine because he's. That kind of that would be great. Funky character. That would be great. Yeah, he is a funky character. If we get to see more about his funky character, that's absolutely fine. I I suppose in some respects he's the Boba Fett of this uh, of this trilogy so far, at least. In that the you you know there'll be a spin off story for him that will already be being written, um, whether for just books or um, comics or whatever, or for a computer game or something. I don't know, but if he's not, then it was pretty much a throwaway half hour. Yeah, maybe yeah. longer. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I get you. You know, it felt like it was inserted just to give Finn something to do. Yeah. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. That's a nasty yeah, yeah. little cough there. Um, yeah. But again, overall, I enjoyed the film. I've been to see it a couple of times in the cinema. I will get it when mm. it comes out on uh, yeah. Duvda or Blu ray or, or yes. whatever digital format that I get it on. Um. And if it's still this, showing, um, if it's still showing in as late as February, I might see it again. I don't know if I will see it a second time before then, because I'm terrified of feral children. You see, so I've yes. not been able to go back to the cinema because because it's basically feral children are camped out there um, well, until tomorrow. Yeah, well, that's it. Now you can go on an evening. Maybe, but see, evenings are not entirely safe from feral children. They're either. not entirely yes, safe, right, but they maybe. will be a Tuesday evening, maybe. especially, will be fairly safe. Yeah, maybe so. I may do that. Um, um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a great film, actually. I thought it was. Uh, yeah, way, me too. Be, way me better too. than way better than I thought it was going to be. Yes. Um, but then I, I, I always have that fear hanging over me that the next Star Wars is going to suck, type thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like Last yeah. Jedi, like you know, Force Awakens might suck. Rogue One might suck. Mm-hmm. Last Jedi might suck. So yeah, what am I going to do? If it's and yeah. I mean, that's born out of the fact I think that um, the prequel trilogy it didn't suck, but I think in many ways it was a little disappointing. I mean, I think that was mm-hmm. for me it was the what I took away from that trilogy was the realization that that Star Wars is not mine. Yeah, and George Lucas is fallible. Can, well, George Lucas was fallible in the first place. It was well, well known about the you can type this, but you can't speak it. Yeah, his dialogue was atrocious. Um, so, yeah, especially was, for the, the he's, he's clever, but I don't think he's a he's clever and a, and a very technical filmmaker. But I don't think he's uh, he's a particularly good director. I think he's a good director. I just don't think he's a particularly good writer. No, I don't, I'm not entirely convinced he's a good a good director either. Uh, but then I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a director. Who am I to uh, be able to um, criticize people and directors? But the, so certainly, what, the films he directed are the first one. Well, so episode four, no one has seen anything like like it before. But then he didn't direct another Star Wars film until episode one. He directed one, two, and three, which were yes. But again, a lot of that was down to the writing. Yeah. I mean, the what dialogue, else he directed? Especially in, what what in else he directed that you thought was good? Has uh, he, has he directed American, anything that he didn't write? American Graffiti was very good. Okay. But yes, he was mostly a, a writer and producer. Yeah. Um, so and and Indiana Jones films, I mean, he, yeah. he wrote those. And you yeah. know, the dialogue for those aren't terrible. But yeah, the nope. episodes, episodes one, two, three, the dialogue was, was, was very poor. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah, we've done yes, Star Wars. Uh, we've done Star Wars. That's, I mean, that's the thing. It's um, the. I tell you what, I was. So there, spoil- there are things. Yeah, spoilers. Spoilers incoming. Spoiler, spoilers incoming. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are specific things there. I, I, I've there's, I've seen some um, reactions to what happened to Leah in space. 
Yeah, I didn't mind it at I, all. No, I thought it was ace. I was delighted. Yeah. I was absolutely stoked. That was a bit of wish fulfillment for me. It's like, yeah. okay, yeah. Powerful in the force. Why would she not have had a bit of training? She might even have been carrying a lightsaber. Yeah. <clears throat> in yeah. my in my head, whether it's true or not, you were going to get to see her with a lightsaber in nine. But obviously that's not going to happen now. That's in yeah. my head. And no one can change that. <laughs> yeah. And and Snoke. Um, I, I didn't see about... I didn't see it coming. I, I remember you asking me this. Um, I didn't see it coming, but I wasn't as surprised with that as I was with Yoda. It's like, holy shit! I did not see that coming at all. You see, I'm like, kind of the opposite. Oh I, 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 I thought it might be Obi Wan actually, because there's okay. rumors that they're going to be doing. Mind you, there's rumors that they'll be doing a Yoda movie and an Obi Wan movie. Um, okay. So I, I mean, McGregor. Cover. Yeah, Ewan McGregor is really keen to to play Obi Wan again. Yeah, uh, he's been very vocal about it. So, you know, there was a there was a thought in my head when Luke was there and he was going to destroy. I thought Obi Wan might appear, but it was Yoda. So I was expecting something. Uh, yeah, Force that's, powers that's to just... death was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, so I, I, I was so more surprised I, I, by the Snoke. Yeah, I, I just I hadn't. I think that's the thing is. I mean, it, it clearly was a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. I'm not suggesting that at all. But I hadn't given any thought to that. I think in my head, I had made assumptions on the fact that it was just going to be, um, uh, it was just going to be Luke and Ray on the island, and that was going to be it. Yeah. Because you know, you didn't see any, you didn't see, you didn't see any Qui Gon's back in in the swamp or anything like that. So I was just kind of right. Okay, that's that's what it'll be. It'll be them. And then when Yoda walks in, the end, that was that was a huge surprise for me. Whereas yeah. Snoke, I I hadn't given enough thought to the story of what I expected or didn't. If well, that makes sense. Again, it comes. Is there going to be a bit more backstory to Snoke? Um, yeah. Or or how he turned Kylo? Because there's the whole Kylo took some students with him. He didn't just kill yes. them all. The Knights of Ren. Yep. We assume that that's where, the Knights of Ren. Thing. Yeah. Um, I, and and I kind of like what they've done. They've made Kylo the big bad for for yeah. for nine. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, it's I, I do I like like the idea. I like the idea a lot. I, in Knowing what you know, of course, knowing you know, knowing that Carrie Fisher's died and all that, it, it is a, it was a, a weird thing to watch them have such a perfect opportunity to kill her off and not take it. Yeah. Okay, granted, this this was all filmed. The film was way way into post production by the time she she died. Never like that. Yeah, yeah, okay, but they could have chosen to so, to kill her off then. So do you think if she hadn't, you know? It, if she had died during filming, mm. God forbid, do you think they might have tweaked the ending so that Luke didn't die? Because I'm, I'm guessing that they were just whittling down the main cast <laughs> without being too... Yes, specific. yeah, I think, so. I think so. I think so. And, 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 and I think Luke will appear in 9. Yes, I think he'll be in 9 as well. Um, yeah, I think he'll be absolutely. in um, but, you know, <laughs> Maybe just at the end, stand and smile, and who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Where little furry creatures play drums. Yeah, and and the other thing that kind of surprised me, although in a in a really good sense, the humor. I I really enjoyed the humor. I thought it was funny. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of funny stuff in there. The the bit at the start with the, I'm I'm on hold for Hux. You know, it, it, you know, a little bit corny yeah. maybe, but <laughs> I, I'll tell you what really blew my mind though. Aid Edmondson being on the bridge of that Star Destroyer. I'm sitting thinking, where's Rick Mail when you need him? What? Aid Edmondson was Aid Edmondson was the guy that was with Hux saying, you know, she's tooling you. Really? Yes. I had absolutely no idea. Is it, like, hang on a second. I'm I'm almost a hundred percent on that one because I looked at it and went, "Holy shit, that's Aid Edmondson." Adrian Edmondson, uh, last year I cameo goes unnoticed by some people on this podcast right now. It seems. And I was, yeah, so, so I saw that and I was like, holy shit. And then they did the whole joke thing. And it, I'm assuming it wasn't deliberate. I'm not sure Rian Johnson's a big bottom or, or the Young Ones fans or anything like that. But the fact that they did the humor moment, moment that, that, that kind of humor with Aid Edmondson standing on the bridge of a Star Destroyer, it just got me. It maybe yeah. shot a whole new light on it for you, maybe. I don't know. I had absolutely no idea. Oh, well, for sure I'll be watching that. Um, for sure I'll be watching that. So so yeah, I mean that that for me was a uh, and there was that and then there was obviously you know there was humor throughout but there was also look at the end you know mm -hmm. facing down the attacks and and 
Tyler yeah. ship and everything. And just, <laughs> Do you think we got him? <laughs> and then he steps forward and just brushes his shoulder so off. So good. Yep. Just like, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. So, yeah, well, there's a lot of good about that. I, uh, I called... I, I'm, I'm, I feel I have to justify this. Like, every time there's a... There's a and, and, of course, it's a massive spoiler, but uh, um, every time there's a, a kind of a twist, you hear all the internet snarks, oh, I caught it, I caught it, I caught it. I caught Luke. So did I. I and sussed. I'll, and I'll How tell did you, you why. Catch him? Because of the uh, lack of grey in the beard and hair. Oh, it was nothing to do with that for me. Because so I know you... from personal experience, when you trim it, the grey goes. I, I, but if you... So this is how my mind worked. When he appeared, I looked at him, and of course I got the whole goosebumps and everything, because Luke Skywalker's mm-hmm. going to kick some ass. And I looked at him, and I was like, he looks like he did in the flashback with Kylo. And to me, that, that just automatically meant he's not really there. He's not really there. He's facing off against Kylo the way that Kylo remembers him, at his strongest. Yeah. I, um, I put that down to, I, I, I understand justification, I, but I put that down. I put that to change the appearance down to, well, he's, you know, tidied himself up for coming back to civilization. But then, because at that point, I didn't, I didn't call it at all. I only called it when they were about to fight. Because they, in the movie, they draw attention to Kylo Ren's heel twisting in the salt. Salt, yeah. And they call and you see the salt the and people. you see the red. They yeah. then call attention to Luke's, and Luke does the same thing and doesn't and do anything. No I'm like, movement. he's a yeah. ghost. He's a ghost. He's totally a ghost. And I was right. I was like, yes. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. I, I, I noticed that the second time round. I, I didn't notice it the first time round, but I thought about it after the film, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. So I watched yeah. for it the second time round to see if they'd been clever enough to do that. And they had. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was, I was quite, to... quite proud of myself, but I'm, I'm not normally that detail focused in a movie. But it was just one of these things that just happened to catch me. Uh, they're drawing my attention to that. Why are they drawing my attention? Why do I need to see his heels? Why am I seeing his? Oh, oh, I, yeah, I see what they've done here. And I was quite excited to, to have spotted that. So, yay, indeed, give me indeed. points. So, points for Chris. So, over the Christmas period, Mr. Mr. Christopher, yes. what else did you watch? Well, um, what, something I was going to talk about. So this wasn't specifically over the Christmas period, um, and this dips into, I guess, the other stated half of the purpose of our podcast is uh, so this, oh, is, this is where they join. So before Christmas, but not long before Christmas, I watched Glow. Yes. So this is the this is a Netflix series that is based on the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, which was a uh, this was a surprise to me. I remember reading a thing in Empire saying they were doing it, and I had never heard of it up to that point. Absolutely no knowledge of it at all. Uh, at that stage, but uh, Gorgeous Leaders, Gorgeous Leaders Wrestling, okay, fine. Watch the series. Really enjoyed the series. It's it's funny, but not um, not stupid funny or anything like that. It's it's uh, it's just decent, but a uh, uh, almost soapy drama, if you like, but with a lot of humor, a lot of kind of a background level of humor in it. Uh, really, really enjoyed it very much. Um, and then. Because Netflix offers it as well. Uh, Netflix offered me a, a documentary on actual real life glow. And then I found out there that a wrestler that I know came from there. Not no personally, because I don't, but at mm-hmm. some point. What I didn't I didn't realize that was because my wrestling knowledge is om- almost entirely WWF, WWE, and quite specific decades at that at that. Um what I didn't realise was that somebody that I had watched, somebody I had I'd liked. Uh, had actually come from Glow. And do you know who that is? No. So, you, did, so what do you know about Glow already yourself? Uh, were you I, aware of it? Did you, did you see any? I was or? aware of it, but I hadn't seen any. Um, and I will be honest, I have watched that first episode. Uh huh. And I was not hooked. I'm not sure I would have been either, but um, it survived my three episodes rule. And so, and that was enough. Uh, and there weren't, you know, there was only like 10. I was like, well, I've gotten three now. So I've gotten three. I'm, I'm enjoying it well, well enough to keep watching. So, so I did. But um, yeah, the, the clips of the actual show that I saw on the documentary, it, what a weird thing it is. Like for all the WWE nowadays is very entertainment focused. You never really feel like you're watching Saturday Night Live. Apart from sometimes when the rocks on it. Yeah, but 
but Blow had bits like that in it all the time. They were actually they had the 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 wrestlers doing proper skits and things. It's it's quite bizarre. It's quite a strange thing. Um, I don't see that it would ever make a resurgence or anything like that. Certainly, it's called the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Now. Somebody somewhere would take issue to that, I think. But uh, but yeah, quite a, quite a fascinating little thing. But the the wrestler that um, that came out of it was Ivory. Mm-hmm. Ivory is a Glow alumni, yeah, and she was in the documentary. Um, she's the only one there that I recognise. There, there were others. There are people there who've uh, come from other wrestling dynasties and stuff like that that I don't recognise the names of and haven't seen or heard of any of their families. But um, certainly in in the Glow Netflix show itself, there are cameos from from wrestlers I recognised. But uh, knowing the, that uh, that Ivory went the other way around was uh, was ah, oh, this is Sandra, <laughs> and she looks just as good as she did. <laughs> like she hasn't aged a day. No, I so as I say, I, I watched the first episode. I wasn't hooked. I don't know if I can revisit it. I don't know if I can use that time for that. Convince me. Um, I, I'm not even going to try. I'm not even oh. going to try. You, you'll enjoy it or you won't. If you've if you've tried it, I mean, it's the only thing I would ever say to anybody is that well, give it a try. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, if you're interested in the actual the real life glow, then seek out the documentary instead. Though it's it, the documentary is quite schmaltzy, uh, you know, showing you that these women, how they are now and, you know, meeting up with one another for the first time in 20 years and stuff like that. And everybody gets very tearful and stuff like that. So it's quite a schmaltzy thing. But yeah, um, uh, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's quite a fascinating, it's quite a fascinating little um, uh, promotion. It's like, how did, did, how did this become a thing? It's like lightning struck and created this. Can't imagine any other time in the world that this would have been a thing, become a thing. Very, very odd. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Mm. And then the, other thing, the other thing I was watching, which I'm not actually finished, I have, I'm just looking away there, I have 23 minutes of the last episode of it left to watch after we're finished recording today. Um, and that's another Netflix thing, Netflix thing called Dark. Okay. It's very good. It's very good. Mm. Oh yes. What's it about? Um, I don't know. I'm not very good at doing synopsis. Um, I'm like these people that I slag off on Wikipedia, who try to do synopsis for films and end up writing like the plot of the film. So, well, that's not really what you're supposed to do. Um, it's a uh, drama. It's um, kind of. It's got a, a feel of um, like Scandinavian noir about it, but it's German, uh, and it is in German language. Although you can watch a dubbed version if you hate life, um, don't do that. Don't do that, kids. Don't watch a dubbed version. It's just wrong. Hearing chirpy Californian voices talking over the top, top of this grey, dark, bleak German place. No, it's just wrong. Watch it. Read the subtitles. You'll learn to read first if you have to. That's what I do. Um, but yes, it's been really, really good. Um, and it's it's got an element of supernatural about it as well. So kind of supernatural thriller, bit of crime in it as well. So it's an, it's an odd thing. But I have okay. very, very much enjoyed it. Right. I was going to look up and see if it had uh, if it was getting any more as well. More dark. More dark. Yeah, more dark. We need more dark. Yes, in Scotland, we need more dark. Yeah. Uh, nope. Wiki says positive and negative comparisons were made to the Netflix series Stranger Things. So, well, okay. which I haven't watched either. Oh, you've not? Oh, okay. I have a certain belligerence about TV shows at times. I don't yeah. do it with movies, but about TV shows, when everybody goes, This is so brilliant, absolutely have to watch yeah. it, it will change yeah. your life. And it's yeah. like, Okay, um, very few shows have done that for me. Mm-hmm. There's very few shows I go back to and watch time and time again. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone said Game of Thrones is God on television. It's just the best thing ever. And I'm like, yeah, it's a bit boring, actually. You know, okay, you get a little bit of boobs, a little bit of violence, and then, you know, 40 minutes of nothing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yep. And it's been stretched out. You know, you've got these key things that happen in it. And it's been stretched out over a multitude of seasons. And it could have really probably been squished into two, you know. Everybody just goes, oh, red wedding, green wedding, yellow wedding, blue wedding, ooh, uh, dragon, ooh, uh, 
someone gets their cock chopped off or something. It's like yeah. you could condense that into a film almost, or, or maybe a, a trilogy of films, rather than you know six or seven seasons, whatever it is. Mm, I, I yeah. mean, it's all right, and, and if people like it, they like it. But don't tell me it's the best TV show that's been. No, no, I, I know what you mean. I, I used to be the same with music. Uh, to some degree, I still am. The worst thing that music can be for me is popular. Well, I don't mind popular. Um, the things that I like but that are popular. That's ultimately, yeah, yeah. That's but that's ultimately what it comes down to is that if it's popular, that's what you'll get. You'll get people banging the drum of it, and, and, and saying it's amazing and da, da, da. yeah. And it's the way they bang the drum as well. It's like, oh, yeah. you don't. You, your life isn't complete without this. I'm like, seriously. Yeah. You know, it's, it's me. Yeah. It's funny. It feels feels kind of complete. Mm. Just, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, yeah. I seem to be doing okay. I've got all my toes yeah. and all my fingers and. I have nine of each, so you know. I'm fine. Yeah. Oh no, but you see, you're supposed to have ten of each. That's the thing, and it'll make you grow this extra ten. That's what, what you're missing. Right. Game okay. of Thrones. Game of Thrones will actually make you grow your tenth too. It's amazing. That would be an awesome tagline, wouldn't it? Eleventh, eleventh too. You have ten toes already, don't you? It's fingers. Eleventh mm-hmm. finger. Tenth finger. Ninth. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. It doesn't matter. So, so you you said there was a little surprise that you had lined up as well. Did I? Surprise thing that you wanted to speak about? Yeah. Oh, dear. Right, we'll move, oh, we'll move swiftly on. Um, so, for, for, for my viewing pleasure yes. over this period, I've watched a few films yes. and so on and so forth, but two things have really caught my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, one is a net. And, and sorry, just before you, before you say this, just to be clear, just to be clear, listeners, Alistair is not telling you that you must listen to these because your life is not complete. We'll just no. be clear on that before we start. <laughs> They're very good, and if you want to give them a try, you, you will hopefully yes. be entertained. Yes. Um, so the first one is... If you uh, value his opinion, seek him out, give him a try. Yeah. And That's give all me we're a, saying. That's all we're get, saying, people. That's all we're saying. And then give us a social get media cases. afterwards. Get off our cases, God damn it. Get off our cases. Calm down here. Just two guys. Down. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the first one is also net well, I mean again I, I'm like you I'm, I'm kind of hooked on the whole Netflix thing because it's I, I like the well maybe not hooked, but you know you can get that splurge um, hmm. and the I do it one, for a month over the festives because the, the the TV on telly is usually a bit rubbish and I have a bit more time to myself so, so okay. well, sort of, we'll watch some stuff so the first one is a David Fincher TV series called Mind Hunters. Oh, okay I've heard about this now and it's about the uh, beginnings of the behavioral so, yes. Or the, or the well, no. So the behavior the is already hunters. there. Yeah, it's yeah. the you know the whole profiling thing and how they do it. Mm-hmm. And they interview serial killers and and stuff like that, and then try it out in the real world and stuff. And it's mm-hmm. it's a true story in inverted commas, as as true as these stories ever are. You know, mm-hmm. the artistic license in there, I'm sure. Of course. Um, yeah. But it is seriously interesting, and it's mm-hmm. and it hooked me. Um. So I watched. I think it was nine episodes, eight episodes in the first season. Again, I like that as well. I like these condensed. There's some shows that I can watch for 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 episode, you know, 21 episodes a season, but the really really interesting ones tend to also be quite um, mentally heavy, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, condensing it down time. to eight or nine episodes, I think, is a great thing. And Mind Hunters, yeah. Mind Hunters is one of those. Um, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. And so it's a bit oh, strange in that, but you know, it's it's good. Yeah, I remember Empire saying something about it uh, some months ago, and I remember also uh, one of my friends mentioned that uh, she started watching it on Netflix, thinking it was something else because the just based on the picture that they give you in Netflix to kind of advertise, you know, the big just the, the big splash picture that they give you to advertise the thing. If you don't read anything about it and you look at that, you're thinking, I know what that is. That's going to be based in a creepy asylum. I like creepy asylums. I'm going to watch this. There's just something about the picture that they give you. It's creepy as I am. Yeah, I think that's fair. But, uh, but yeah, she 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 liked it as well. So um, so yeah, you're the second person to recommend that. Yeah. And the yeah. second thing I watched, which took up a lot of my time, well, not mm-hmm. not a lot of my time. The second thing I watched, uh, the new season of Black Mirror at Netflix. Oh, no, see, I haven't watched that yet. I didn't realize that a new series, a new series, was about to, as the kids say, drop. Yes, it dropped, and it's lit AF. Oh, is it really? Is it lit AF? Did it's I lit see? AF. Did I see a picture of um, Matt Damon? No. To do with it? Okay. No, no, no. Um, Fine. There'll be a couple of faces you recognise. Of and course. Jodie Foster directed one of the episodes. Oh, nice. Um, She's quite good. 
and, and again, you know, I love the Black Mirror because it's a real mind fuck of a show. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, season right one and two was Netflix. brilliant. Yep, mm. season three was fantastic. Season four, the the bigger budget gives them a little bit more to play with as well, mm-hmm. which is nice. And the last episode is my favorite of the lot. Because um, they, they, it's kind of like I, I think I can speak about it without spoiling too much. It's kind of like a little anthology. But please, please try to uh, not spoil yeah. it too much because I'm yeah. going to watch this. It's kind of like a little anthology. It harks back to like tales from tales of the crypt and, and tales from the dark. Tales of the unexpected. Tales of the unexpected stuff do, like that. Do, so it harks do, back do, to that. Do, do, do. And I'm not, doing the dance. Yeah, it's not as raw as like the crypt keeper and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But, it harks back to that, and it's it's really for me. It was it was one of the most clever ones, and that's saying something because they're all really clever. And uh, you know, one of them is okay, one of them is good. So uh, no, okay, one of them is good. One of the episodes is good, but I felt a little unsatisfied by it. Um, and the rest are are excellent. And then the last one, which which you can't skip to, you you know, you want to watch it last. Um. No the intention last... of doing anything else. Yeah, well, some people. Anything else would be madness. <coughs> well, for the most part. Um... If, you, if you if you're listening to this podcast and you're the kind of person that will put on a series like this and skip to the last episode, get off now immediately. We don't want you. Well, That's to be crazy. fair, to be fair, Black Mirror no, episodes no, don't ha- no. they don't have to no. be watched in sequence. I know, I know, but we don't want that kind of chaos here. That's not yeah. the kind of chaos that we encourage here. We want order, a bit of order, and that is exactly the kind of order we need. Yeah. You're ridiculous. Skip into the last episode. Have I heard so, such nonsense? So, highly recommend it. Good. Especially if you like Black Mirror. Yep. Um, I'll yeah, watch it this yeah. week. The episodes are a proper mindfuck. Um, good. Um, and again, it's the whole, you know, trying to do good things all turns out wrong. Yeah. You know, and, and where you think it's going to turn out wrong isn't. It's never where it goes. If that makes yeah. sense. Um, I I started watching uh, series three a while back. Um, yeah. So when it first came on Netflix, I thought, oh, this is brilliant because I really enjoyed one and two. Great. I watched series three. I got partway through it and found that it had filled up my reservoirs of bleak. Yes. I had to actually stop. I got so far, probably about halfway through, and it was like, you know what? I need to stop because this is just too depressing. So the just too much. So so I stopped and then went back to it and and that was fine. And to be honest, I could have just carried on because I think I had just peaked. The one I had just watched was just so particularly bleak. So, so after but, you watched um, the first one, yeah. and again, I'm not going to tell you anything about it other than is this is this four? We're still talking about series four. Season four, yeah. After you're you still risking spoilers here. You're I, not I'm, willing to move on here, and you're just going to risk spoilers. Go I'm going to risk. This isn't really a spoiler. I'm just going to I'm just going to put it out here. I'm going to watch this tomorrow. I may even watch it tonight. Be so, very, very careful. So, the first episode of season four, mm-hmm. there was an awful lot of debate about the ending of it. Right. And it'll be really... In, I, I, know, I know why there's an awful lot of debate about the ending of it. Um, okay. I think it's, again, mostly useless so, so, internet so, yes, debate. So, so but what you're saying is, you watch it, watch it back on if the it's ending. Worth, mm-hmm. If it's worth, we can talk about it next week. Yes. 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 Okay. Good. Now, do you intend to talk more about this? Do you intend to, nope. do you intend to risk my on, ire further? I'm moving on to one more thing which will risk your ire. <laughs> oh, it what? will risk it. I think it In will risk it. In a different way, one was you. Uh, it might be a similar way. <clears throat> Excuse me. I watched a movie on Netflix. Okay. A Netflix original. It wasn't bright, was it? It was bright. Hey, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, if you watched bright, now it got rank reviews, really, that's really great. rank reviews. Yeah, Gosh, that's a shame. I actually, I mean, it wasn't brilliant by any stretch of the imagination. No, I don't, but I don't was imagine it'll be off the Oscars or anything. But and it was yeah. fun, and they yeah. took they took a magic wand in the real world seriously. But the way yeah. they constructed the world, I kind of, I'm, I'm okay with that. And I yeah, thought it was actually all right. And the idea of a sequel, I think it's got, I think it's got a good foundation to build on. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. I think the the it's interesting because I think there must have been a conversation somewhere about whether they decided to take this concept and make it into a movie or make it into a series. I think you make it into a series, then it quickly becomes Freak of the Week, 
And yeah, you'll get to do story arcs and everything like that. And yeah, they could have run with it. They could have done good things with the series, I'm quite sure. But I think it was far more interesting to make it into a movie and get a bigger cast. Yeah, and I th- I think it, I think it made a decent movie. It was you know yeah. contained, um, yes. and then if that was the only one that they ever did, you'd be okay with that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, a sequel doesn't excite me to the degrees of a Star Wars sequel, but I'm kind of like, no. it'd be interesting to see where they go with this world. Yes, exactly. That's exactly it. They have they have created an interesting and compelling world that obeys rules that we understand and that has elements from worlds that we've been reading about for years introduced into it in a realistic way. That's yeah. fascinating. That's a, that's a marvellous accomplishment. So yes, I, I too am quite uh, interested although, in seeing where they go with it next. Although it was a bit heavy on the old racism analogies. And, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, definitely it, wasn't, heavy it wasn't subtle. I mean, no. I get why they did it and they had to, they had to tackle it. Um, but it was, it, it was a bit like, um, you don't know what irony is? Well, I've got a big piece of metal and I'm going to smack you in the face with it. That's iron <laughs> on you. Mm. You know, it's, uh, it's felt I, a bit like um, that sometimes. I was trying to remember, I was trying to work the site as, as I was watching it and I never did any further research because uh, honestly, what do you Google? Um, but I was trying to work out, it's like, I don't think that I can remember Will Smith dropping an F-bomb in a movie before that. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? Was he dropping F bombs? What bad you gonna boys, do he? when they come for you? Uh, first and second one, I think. Okay, because he's not known for it. I mean, in fact, he's known for the opposite. Yeah, Particularly you know, with this in his music career, yes. in particular, he's he's very much not the F bomb dropper. Yes. I, um, I, and you'll you'll drop a shit with the best of them. But yes, I drop it? a shit with the best of them. Yes, dropping um, a dude. Yeah, you know the most exciting bit of Will Smith news that I heard, and I I, I think it's I think it's. Uh, I think it's a tease. I don't think it's real, but um, mm-hmm. somebody mentioned to him about uh, you know you should redo or 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 do a a, a pickup Fresh of Prince. Uh, Fresh Prince, and he said, wow. "Well, if we do it, we'll do a redo, and I'll play Uncle Phil because I look like him now." <laughs> and I was just Hardly. like, "Please, <laughs> oh, you know what? Facially, because there was that picture. There's a picture of him, um, and you, you can Google this. There's a picture of Will Smith. I think he's doing a bungee jump, and uh-huh. the, the angle." And the way that his face is squashed up, he looks like Uncle Phil. I'm Googling Will Smith, Uncle Phil. So am I. Uh, yeah, I'm just seeing lots of pictures of Uncle Phil. No, no, so, so it's... Oh, wait, no. I see what you mean. <laughs> I'm just seeing lots of okay, oh, yeah, and there you go. That's the point proven there. I'm just seeing lots of pictures of Uncle Phil. No, I'm not. I'm seeing a picture of Will Smith. Oh, yeah, okay. there you go. That's entirely fair. So, if they do but it... I, he's I, nowhere near the shape of him. No, no, he's not. But still, if they, I, I would love, I would absolutely love it if they did. Even just... You know, five or six episodes, like a pickup or something, where Will Smith was Uncle Phil, and they kind of redid the Fresh Prince. Um, I think I, I, there's just I just it, the, the whole concept of that now amuses me. And Will Smith seems to have got his sense of humor back in life because there was a bit where he went quiet; you didn't hear much from him, and yeah, and and everything. And then over the last year or so, he seems to have come back into the spotlight a little bit, mm-hmm. and he just seems to be kind of happy i guess enjoying himself again enjoying himself yeah so so it'd be great to see that for me i would love it he uh, I, th- I think for me i would prefer if they didn't recast it i would be quite interested in seeing you know just again just a one off one or two episodes of fresh prince how many years on is it is it 30 years dear god it could be about that but uh, no, it was early nineties, wasn't it's, it? Yeah, it's not thirty years since yeah, it finished. So yeah. um, I but, mean, uh, it finished but if you just took it, or ninety-five or something like that. Yeah. So if you just if you just took it the the twenty twenty-five years on, but there's no reason to think that uh, somebody else from Philly, born and raised there, couldn't come and live with Will Smith. Will Will Smith could inhabit the Uncle Phil character, but still be Will. Yeah, it I think, started. I, I think that would be interesting. And you still you still get Carlton and things like that coming in yeah. nineteen ninety. Okay. So it is almost thirty years old. Twenty wow. years. Um, yeah, yeah. I, feel old, but I, I would, I would like, I would like that. I think because so, um, the it's not that long ago. Um, must only be a couple of years when um, 
when Will Smith did that film, that fairly poor film with his son, where they were standing in the oh, planet yeah. and all the beasties tried to eat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, yeah were on, they were on Graham Norton, and him and his son did the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air rap together, but Carlton came out, and Jazzy Jeff was there as well. So it's like, just look, there's a reunion right there. Yeah. There's only a few of them missing. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like to see that. So Carlton can still do the dads as well. Yeah. You know what made me feel old recently? Uh, maybe, maybe your wife. No, no, no. She makes me feel 10 years younger. Um, oh, that's so sweet. Well, Did she listen just, to this? No. <laughs> God, that's, that's disappointing. It's wasted, isn't it? Yeah, um, a little bit. No, so, so bear with me here while I go through the story and don't uh-huh. interrupt me and tell me to shut the fuck up. I was watching Dawson's Creek again. I started watching Dawson's Creek again. <laughs> Can I just stop you there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. I'm a big, I, I, I like Dawson's Creek. Judge me if you want. Um, I know a lot of people don't, and there's a lot of reasons why, and so on and so forth. But I enjoyed it. I like the series. It, it's 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 one of the ones I can go back to and watch. And in the first season uh, of Dawson Street, Pacey Witter has an affair with his teacher, who's called Miss Jacobs. Mm-hmm. And there's a point in one of the episodes where she goes, "Pacey, this will never work. You're 15, and I'm 36." And I was like, "Oh fuck, I'm older than the teacher. He's fucking." Yes, and you're, <laughs> and you, and now, now the things around the other way, and you're, you're older than that teacher, and you fancy fifteen year olds. So, well, no, none of them were fifteen at the time of filming, so we're okay. good there. Um, All right. If I was to fancy Pacey, he wasn't fifteen when they when they filmed that. Joshua Jackson was older than that, um, and I totally forgot that they what did was he, a break. He ninety or twenty, I think. <laughs> Um, okay. I totally forgot they did a Breakfast Club episode um, okay. in season two, I think it was. No, season one. It was still season one. They did a Breakfast Club uh, episode where, do you remember the Mighty Ducks films? Uh, you maybe remember vaguely the first one. I'm not I'm not sure if I've ever seen them. Okay, so the, I, I'm the Mighty Ducks films. Clearly aware of are. But... Yeah, Emilio Estevez plays a, a lawyer or something who gets drunk. He and follows me on Twitter. Yeah, does he? Ooh, yeah, he does. Um, so, so, so he he does a you know he plays a lawyer. Get I think it's a lawyer or something. Gets drunk, gets caught drunk driving. Community service is coaching this kid's ice hockey league because he used to be a big ice hockey guy or or had the potential. And and one of the kids in it is Joshua Jackson who plays Pacey Witter in Dawson's Creek. And in mm-hmm. season one of Dawson's Creek, there's a joke about how bad the uh, in in this Breakfast Club set episode. There's a joke about how bad the uh mighty ducks films are and oh. Casey winter joshua jackson is actually kind of like them <laughs> and it's like yeah i like it's, I, I, you know it was completely out of place for the show if that makes sense to, yeah. to have that kind of wink wink nudge nudge but it worked especially yeah. in a in an episode that was based off of breakfast club yeah um, it's um it's quite an interesting thing to hear that they did that so early yeah yeah well it's, and that's when Kevin you know, had full control and it was his total baby and of course he was the one that did the screen films um he, he yeah, screen you would films. Ex- you'd expect normally normally the way it works is they start off and they're somewhat tentative and then once they've got an establishment once they've established following usually around about the third series everything they start playing a bit more <coughs> excuse me yeah and uh, as i say i think it's you know they, they were doing this breakfast club type episode so they were mm-hmm. playing all you know they were they were playing in that in itself yeah um yeah so it's, yeah I, I used to dislike the play episodes i used to dislike them quite strongly I play episodes of everything i mean my the first time i saw the buffy episode where they all sing i hated it absolutely really? hated it oh yeah oh i, I didn't like that i liked story arc episodes because back then the story arc was done differently story arc was a lot more sketchy um, now you get story in your face, and you just want a, something a little bit lighter now and again. Yeah, but, it's still, yeah, it's still, the time it's still I, played I, I, some I, I, of the story art. Hmm. But that episode still played to some of the story art. Oh yeah, I'm not saying it didn't, but it, it's just that sort of um, the, the whimsical nature that was there all the time. It get almost felt like it was getting in the way of story. Um, and I was always about the story. I want to, I want the story to get advanced properly, and it barely did. Joss Whedon has noted your concern and not given a fuck. 
<laughs> yes, indeed. Because because now we're well, back in it's one of my favorites. It's the the actual the fact that they were able to do something like that. They created freedom to do something like that. I now think it's absolutely marvelous. My opinion has absolutely changed. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and and like the the puppet episode in Angel. Oh, Angel. That was yeah. That was really good. Yeah, I like and that. at the time, hated it. Absolutely hated it. I was like, what to nerf are we doing? Why am I looking at a puppet of this thing? Look at it now, and if I'm watching Angel, out of context, no, it's still ridiculous. But in the context of Angel and how seriously it always took itself and everything like that, it's just hilarious. Yes. Just absolutely ridiculous. It's a bit funny or ridiculous. So, yeah. Yes. Chris likes his bit of whimsy now he's an old man. Yeah, it seems to be. So there's room for more whimsy in my life, it seems. Now that I can have, you know, limits of bleak and things reached by Charlie Brooker and such, Indeed. it's nice. <laughs> Indeed. And I, th- I think this has been a, I, I think this has been an unformed return to our podcast, Mr. Chris. I think, I think so should, too. I think we should keep anything else that we've got for next week. Okay, we can do. We still have time. Um, I, yes. I thought perhaps we could talk about the Royal Rumble and things. But my, my the only reason I wanted to talk about it now is because you know, over the over the next week, uh, and also uh, Wrestle Kingdom as well. But over the next week, um, more news will develop with the Royal Rumble. You know, it's it's bound to things will happen. Yes. Um, yes. The, the only thing I was going to say then. So before we know anything more, Women's Royal Rumble is now yes. a thirty woman Royal R- Royal Rumble, which yes. is uh, ten more, eleven more, I think, than the roster that they currently have. Yes. Who do you reckon is going to fill it? I Lita and Trish Stratus will come back for a bit. You think so? Both I of them? Would, yep. I wouldn't be surprised okay. to see uh, Beth Phoenix make an appearance. Mm-hmm. Beth Phoenix, uh, I'm with you. I'm with Beth Phoenix. I'm with you with Lita. Lita has wrestled recently. I think in the last 12 months. She wrestled um, for a promotion. But uh, I, I, I don't think Trish Stratus is in ring shape. But in but not that I'm not saying she's in great shape, but it, it's that sort of thing of are they going to take somebody who is that rusty in for even for the Royal Rumble? Don't know. It's probably the one place where you can get away with it. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I agree. So I with think that they'll bring well. back some, and I think there'll be a few other surprises. Uh, not convinced yeah, I think that, not convinced that Ronda Rousey is going to turn up though. See, I was thinking Ronda Rousey is probably, but the nearest to a dead cert that there is. See, I, I don't. I maybe uh, it wouldn't surprise me, but it also wouldn't surprise me if she didn't turn up. Yeah, I, I just have a, I have just have a horrible feeling that. They are, and we won't, we won't know this until the, the night, I think, but the, they're basically just going to bring the entire of the women's roster of NXT up for cannon fodder. None oh, of them are, are going to have a chance of winning it. It no. won't be a call up for any of them. And then it'll just be day one in there for the Royal Rumble. Hey, they'll all get the pops and then they're gone again. And nothing's done because I think the, the women's divisions are languishing somewhat at the moment. But, yeah, um, everybody needs, you know, they need jobbers. Yes, then indeed, and nothing more so than Royal Rumble. Yeah, that was uh, that was it. So yeah, it's gonna be quite fascinating to to see. Um, indeed, I'm quite looking, I'm probably looking forward to that more than anything else in that show at the moment. Really, you're not looking forward to Von Strowman versus Kane versus Lesnar? See, we're getting into it now. Stop it! Stop yeah, no. sucking me yeah, into well, your it's conversation. Fine. It's absolutely fine. We've got plenty of time to discuss that because I I don't imagine that's going to change between now and then. But uh, who knows? Indeed. Yes. Okay. Cool. Well, here we are, yeah. back to form. Yep. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, although I'm here, Chris, I'm not supposed to say thank you. I'm supposed to say, yeah, you've tuned in. Meh. Meh. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> cool. And we'll catch you uh, next, next week. week. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. We'll, catch you. We'll, we'll catch you the next time we do one of these. That's same, what we'll same bat channel, same bat time. Possibly, yes. Go. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Bye. Bye.